G'day from the Kimpton Shinjuku Hotel on a day where I run through with you what all the drivers drove to the recent Japanese Grand Prix and I can tell you there's some really different, different cars, cars in this episode. In this Drivers Drove episode, you're going to see cars that you have never seen driven to a track outside of Japan. And I'm going to kick it off with Lando Norris, who drove this Toyota Sienta Hybrid. This is a five-door minivan. Sells for around $13,000 here in Japan. But it's also sold in Hong Kong, Singapore, Indonesia, Laos, Taiwan, and Thailand. It's a far cry from the McLarens. Lando drove at Monza and at Silverstone, just to mention a couple. Beautiful McLarens, obviously, but here he's in a rather suburban sort of car. And how far is the drive from wherever they're staying to the track? Well, I'll get to that a little later on in the video, but it's not a terribly long drive. And what about his teammate, Daniel Ricciardo? Well, he was driving the exact same model car, the Toyota Sienta Hybrid. But have a look at this. He's got one of his hubcaps missing. I didn't notice that at first. My wife picked up on that when she looked at the pictures. Poor Daniel, he's one hubcap shy of a full house here. But I did note that inside the car there was some lovely orange trim in the McLaren colours. I'm guessing that's pure fluke, not by design. And just quickly, if you're looking for a VPN, a virtual private network provider, have a look at Surfshark. It's been invaluable for me this year because I travel a lot, I need access to certain websites, portals, applications, which I can't get in some countries because they are blocked. I head to Surfshark, which opens up a whole realm of opportunity. And if you're a Netflix user, you can actually log on to different countries and get different content. And right now, if you head to the link in the description below, you will save 83% on your subscription. You'll get three extra months free and there's a money back guarantee. 83% off, three months free and a money back guarantee. Thank you, Surfshark. I should mention that there are two car parks at the Suzuka track. One is near the far end gate and the other one is quite close to the main middle swipe gates of that paddock. And with three of the teams having their hospitality suites at the very top of the paddock, they would use that far end swipe gate. But most of the drivers parked in the main car park. And unfortunately for us, there was no signage above each of the parking spots. So there was a bit of investigative work required to work out who was driving what. But my investigation showed that Valtteri Bottas was driving his familiar Julia. This is the Quadrifolio version, which is a souped up model of the Julia, which is now for Romeo and his teammate Zhou Guan Yu was in a Stelvio Quadrifolio. They've been pretty consistent with those cars this year. Let's move on to the Haas drivers now. Kevin Magnussen was in a Toyota Noah. Now, if you've not been to Japan or some of these Asian countries that this car is sold in, you'd have no idea. It's a minivan, retails for around about 20,000 US dollars. It's functional, obviously inexpensive, and it got Kevin to and from the track along with his crew over the Japanese GP weekend. Oh, and I should mention too that for Kevin Magnussen fans, I have a new side print collaboration with Kevin coming up very shortly. And if you're not registered to get first advice, head to kimilman.com now and do so so that you get the best choice of numbers because these are all hand signed and hand numbered. And his teammate Mick Schumacher, well, he was in a Honda People Mover, a step wagon. This one retails for around 20,000 US too here in Japan. And once again, you won't see these vehicles at too many other countries that we travel to with Formula One. The Suzuka track was built in 1961. It's a test track for Honda, so there was a huge Honda presence at the weekend and it was quite timely that Max won the championship here because all of the Honda executives were in the paddock to help him celebrate post-race. But let's go on to the Hondas that Max Verstappen drove. He drove a Honda Civic Type R. Now, that should come as no surprise to most of you. And so did Sergio Perez, both of those cars with similar number plates. And while I'm at it, let's talk about Pierre Gasly, Yuki Tsunoda, exactly the same car. And every one of them was white. And have a look at the spoiler on the back of this Honda Civic Type R. It's a monster, isn't it? I was actually staying at the Suzuka Media Hotel, and every day we'd have to pass the Honda factory on our way into the track. I mentioned the Media Hotel a few seconds ago. It's a quirky affair. It was the Hotel Castle Inn, and if you've never stayed at a Japanese business hotel, it's a real culture shock because the rooms are very tiny. They're big enough for, uh, what is this, about a three-quarter size bed. You have this radio control just above your head. There's a television, and then there was this machine down the side where you put 500 yen coins in. 
couldn't quite work out what that was for. But I think it's the bathroom that is the biggest shock because it's actually well, about 20 centimetres higher than the rest of the floor. It's a, it's a cabin, I guess, that they must just slot into the room. Everything's plastic, there's no room to move. It measures 1.5 metres by one metre and that gets a toilet, a sit-up bath, and a sink. But the quirky thing to me was down in the foyer of the hotel between 3 p.m. and midnight, you're welcome to go and take anything from this amenities bar. The shampoo, you squirt out into these little plastic cups. There's cotton buds, there's shaving lotion, aftershave lotion, and we got breakfast included in our rate, but quite frankly, I struggled to find much that I would eat. Instead, I'd head across to the 7-Eleven convenience store just around the corner. Back to F1 drivers and what they drove to the track, Fernando Alonso pulled up in this Renault Capture. Blue in colour and his teammate Esteban Ocon was in a white one. They've driven this to a few races this year, but more often they've been in the big people mover. Who do you reckon was driving this car? This is a Toyota Crown. Now, and Crowns I always associate it with taxis in Singapore and also here in Japan. But this model was slightly higher spec than what you get in a cab. But anyway, this is Alex Albon's car. He was driving it to and from the track with his trainer, Patrick Harding. And uh, there are still some signed Alex pictures left at kimilman.com. Once again, hand signed and hand numbered. And what about his teammate, Nicholas Latifi? Was he in the same car? You'd think so, but no. Nicholas was driving a Honda step wagon. And most of these drivers were staying at the hotel that's adjacent to the track. It's not a five-star property, but it's pretty handy to the track. And the drive entailed heading out of the car park, down one road, a left turn, and then into the track. And as you drive into the track every day, there would be anywhere from 50 to a couple of hundred fans waiting for drivers patiently in the hope that they would reach out of the window and say hi, or maybe even stop for an autograph. I don't think too many did that, but certainly the drivers were welcomed enthusiastically by those home fans. And traffic wise, how bad was it? Um, pretty good on all nights, except for the Friday night when there was a lengthy delay and it was quicker for us to walk four kilometers back to the media hotel than it was to get the media bus. Lewis Hamilton, uh, was he in a Mercedes? Of course he was, he's been in a Merc all year long and he has driven this model a number of times, an AMG GLE 53, driven by his trainer Angela and he had his security guard Lloyd with him at all times, came in in some uh, interesting outfits as usual, was Lewis. George Russell, well he was dressed a little less flamboyantly but came in in what I thought was one of the standout cars a beautiful matte blue AMG GT53. He would park in the far end car park and on a couple of occasions just happened to time his arrival perfectly with that of Charles Leclerc, two popular drivers having a chat as they entered the track. As gorgeous as the Mercedes vehicles are, I think they're topped by the Ferraris. And as usual, we had Charles Leclerc in a beautiful Ferrari Roma. He drove the white one and Carlos Sainz, well, he was driving a black Roma. And on this particular morning, I noticed that he walked towards the swipe gates and suddenly his car, which had his trainer, Rupert Mannering, in it, was beeping away as if uh, somebody had set the alarm off. Then he returned to the car because I gather the keys for the car were still in his pocket given he'd driven it in. So he swapped the keys back to Rupert. Oh, and also I should mention that a lot of the drivers were very patient with the fans who had gathered outside the swipe gates. On the first couple of days, they were all random and roaming everywhere, the, the punters I'm talking about. But on Saturday and Sunday, they were corralled behind a fence. But a lot of the drivers went over to them and signed autographs given that they wait a very long time for these drivers. And our final two drivers uh, are the boys from Aston Martin, Lance Stroll, I gotta say it, every single race, except the couple where they've walked, he was in a DBX. Beautiful colour, this I'm thinking it's maybe solar bronze. And will you Aston Martin fans confirm this is a 707 model, which is the souped up version of the DBX? Comments below please. And his teammate Sebastian Vettel in the most gorgeous Aston Martin DB11. What a colour this is. Uh, Seb parked in the lower car park and tended to walk the length of the whole straight. And if you watched my video earlier in the week, you would have seen that he came in on one day wearing one of these bandanas. But a lot of the Japanese fans pointed out he's got it on upside down. He did sort that out later in the day and turned it the right way up. If you're trying to book a flight on US carrier American Airlines, but you're doing it with an Australian credit card, you get almost to the end of your booking and it says, no, you have to go to the Australian site. And when you do it, 
you slugged a whole lot more for that same flight. And I gather that's the same with many other countries. But here's what you do. Go to a third party site, something like Expedia. I've used it a couple of times. And not only can you book it using your Australian credit card, it was even about $12 cheaper. American Airlines, you're screwing us. Next up, we're off to Austin and hopefully we see some amazing cars there at the upper end of the bracket. What we've seen here is interesting with the lower end stuff being the uh, Sienta, the Noah, the Capture, Step Wagon, Toyota Crown. But I do hope we see some top end stuff at the next race. Thank you people for sticking around to the end. If you've enjoyed the video, one simple favour. Could you please click the like button? And once again, I noticed a lot of you aren't subscribed. So here's your invitation. Please hit the subscribe button and members you know what you get a whole lot of extras free of charge and the opportunity coming up shortly to win some more signed prints you'll find all of my digital images at prostarpix.com for a wide range of merchandise f1 photo books wall art and those signed driver prints at the moment there's Gasly, albon de Vries, and coming up shortly magnuson and for my best images live from the track and all during the week get over to instagram and search my name at kim illman thanks for watching and stay passionate And, and you do get, and we, and we did get.